it's September 30th, 2020. And right here are some strawberry guavas, uh, or so they're commonly referred to. So these guys are here in Hawaii all over the place. As a matter of fact, the forest is full of them. This whole brush you see here, all these smaller plants, those are all strawberry guava. They look beautiful, as a matter of fact. They actually do taste pretty good. I'll go ahead and pick this one. But they don't get as big as your normal guavas, not from what I've seen, but they still are pretty good. So this is actually fairly, fairly big for the size that these guavas actually get to. Like I said, they are really delicious though. Here are some unripe ones and you can see there some green ones and they do kind of change color as they get more and more ripe. So this would be, I would say, it's pretty prime for it because that keeps those burrowing bugs from getting to it. I'm gonna take some of these seeds, some of these fruits, extract the seeds and um, we'll go ahead and grow some because like I said, um, at the very least, this is a beautiful ornamental plant. And I see them a lot in people's yards out here in Hawaii. I'm gonna go ahead and take some fruits. We'll take them home, extract the seeds, and we'll plant some. All right, it's July 14th, 2021. And it's been a couple of months since we've been back here to the strawberry guava. I don't think I showed you guys the portion where I planted it because I actually don't think I did plant it. Um, uh, being caught up with everything else happening in life, I've totally lost track of everything here with my plants. But um, as you can see here, the guavas nevertheless did manage to grow, well at least two of them, out of all those seeds. And two of them, only two of them made it because of this, all of these weeds. But I'm grateful that I have two of them and we'll work with those two. So I'll go ahead and weed this little pot out and we'll come back to see what it looks like then. And there we are. We have our guava pot weeded. And as you can see here, we've got a whole bunch of weeds. I'm going to transplant them here in a couple of days. A couple of days? Well, it is November 29th and it has been a couple of months. So, as I said before in the video, I just keep getting caught up in stuff. But uh, I finally managed to get out and um, come out here to continue with the progress on our guava trees. And they're getting a whole lot bigger. So, this transplantation needs to happen right now. It's weeded. And in case you wondered how these plants have stayed alive for this long inside this small pot, it's because of the fertilizer and these little beads that you see in here, these little BBs are plant food that you sprinkle on. And this is uh, just some plant food that, uh, some sprinkle on plant food that I bought over from the, uh, from Walmart. And um, it kept these guys alive enough to the point where I can kind of, for lack of better words, neglect them and uh, come back to them and they'll still be fine. But that is pivotal to the survival of the plant because it's not growing in the ground where it can get natural fertilizers. Um, potted plants need added fertilizer. And I used to wonder all the time how people um, keep their plants alive and have the plants doing perfectly fine in pots. And it is because the fertilizer, they won't do fine on their own. They do need fertilizer and they do need watering. So that is really important when it comes to potted plants. Um, my idea is to keep these plants potted only for so long and then eventually plant them into the ground. I don't like dealing with potted plants, but as I collect these plants, I have no choice but to move them into a pot until I can find a spot somewhere out at the farm or uh, somewhere else, or eventually when I move into a home that I own where I can plant them into the ground. But feeding the plants is crucial to keeping the plant healthy and also transplanting on time so that the plants can grow at the rate that they should be growing. So it's a very, it's a pretty uh, educational process, but as you continue to plant plants, you, you tend to learn these things, pick these things up as you go. So um, without any further explanation on how these things work, 
um, we'll go ahead and separate these two actually I'll pull them out now yeah you can see the the roots here all tangled together and I I hate to disturb them you know at this point but I have no choice but to so that I can keep both of these plants so we'll go ahead and just do it right here on camera and see it's very dense this root ball is very dense and I definitely will be tearing into some roots here but it's inevitable when it comes to transplanting this late I really hate doing this because it really stresses the plants out and they tend to struggle but like I said adding this fertilizer is crucial because the fertilizer in the miracle Grow potting mix has already been depleted and the plant you, you can tell the plants are doing poorly and that's when you know pretty much before it gets any more serious it's time to uh, add fertilizer so that the plant can continue to feed and get the nutrition it needs these roots are super they're just really tangled up together and you know I usually just lay them in a tray and spray them down with the water hose to uh, detangle these roots but um, I've decided to just kind of separate them like this and if you have if you don't have too much access to these plants I suggest that you take a, a safer route as far as separating plants or at least just not grow them together so you don't have to do this um, because of the lack of access to more of these plants for me these plants are everywhere so it isn't too serious if I lose one of them because I can just go out there and grab some more seeds although the uh, process of restarting is tedious it's um it's a process I'm willing to go through but here we are we have them separated things seem fairly intact you can see this one long root here on the bigger plant super long root and I'm really glad we get to a uh, transplant them so we'll put one here in this pot I'm just gonna go ahead and do this process off camera um, but I've got them going into one gallon pots so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pot these guys up get them held up steady and then um, we'll pick back up right after that finally we've got them transplanted and here they are in their one gallon pots they've been moved over from this little six inch pot which is about a half a gallon pot that they shared together and now they each have one gallon to themselves so um, the tree the little small trunk there seems to be maturing pretty well so hopefully these guys get to bounce back all right um, with the transplantation like I said we did uh, sort of put the roots through a little bit of trauma there separating them and um, that might have a negative impact on the plant but for the most part I think they should do perfectly fine even if they drop all their leaves I'm fairly certain that they will bounce back eventually but uh, we will give these guys maybe about a week um, and have them standing up straight normally if they're kind of you know hanging over like this I would have a a little stick to prop up the plant and I just tie it with some um, plant tape but it doesn't seem like they're struggling too much to stand up these uh, trunks are pretty strong so like I said we'll come back in about a week and we'll see how they're doing then and I uh, will wrap it up all right it's December 15th 2021 and it has been just a little over two weeks since we've been back here to the strawberry guavas after they've been transplanted and um, it's been raining uh, pretty profusely here the past two weeks so I think that has really helped with the um, the process of uh, transplantation here because as you can see the guavas are looking totally fine um, I do see a little bit of yellowing here I don't know if you can see it on camera but some of the leaves here are just slightly yellow but I think um, for the most part like I said the rain has kind of helped um, buff the plants uh, ability to bounce back after uh, putting them through stress uh, by pulling those roots apart 
but like I said, for the most part, they look perfectly fine. Um, I'm definitely going to need to do some pruning here in the future. Uh, with these lower branches here, you can kind of see they're a bit low. So I might take some of those guys off and allow the plant just to have a long trunk and kind of come up to the top. And it just bushes out right at the top. So um, that'll be something for, uh, for another vi video in the future. But as for now, I think um, our strawberry guavas are going to do perfectly fine. Um, I'm glad I finally got this first portion of the video, um, well, the first portion of this plant's life uh, done. As I said um, earlier, I didn't really plant these seeds into the ground. I kind of just popped the fruits into a, a small six inch pot, um, but I didn't really cover it with any soil. I just got carried away and uh, eventually I looked back and I was wondering what exactly I had put in the pot and realized they were the strawberry guavas and I think I had put actually maybe three fruits in there and each fruit has multiple seeds but out of all those seeds um, only these two had germinated maybe there were more that germinated and the weeds had killed them off um, by cutting off the sunlight from those seedlings but I, I really don't recall ever looking down and seeing um, any seedlings uh, in the first place I was just lucky to get these two so like I said we'll watch these two for uh, the next couple of months and we'll come back sometime in the future to see how they're doing then I think by then I either would have transplanted them but if hopefully if I remember to do a video on it um, we'll do the video uh, during that transplantation as for now once again uh, this is the strawberry guava um, or so they are commonly referred to here in Hawaii as uh, maybe they're called something else in your country on your island uh, in your state um, whatever region you're from but I'll go ahead and find the scientific name for this plant and you'll probably see it on the title that way you can determine which variety of guava this actually is um, so you can let me know in the comments what they're referred to as where you're from but um, thank you for watching and I'll see you here in a couple of months.